Hello and welcome to another episode of the Classical Republican. Uh, today we're talking about um, On Duties by Giuseppe Mazzini. This is part three. And we're going to be starting on chapter 11. Before we start, I have my, uh, I have my um, Phrygian cap of liberty, which was actually worn by people uh, in, uh, at this time. I've seen, seen illustrations of people um, who were in, uh, in Garibaldi's army trying to unite Italy. And, of course, the people in his army were the red shirts because they wore red shirts. And I'm wearing my uh, gold and silver tie, if you can see it. I don't know if you can see it in the, in the lighting. But uh, gold and silver, referring to the Venetian ballot. Okay, so in chapter 11, the economical question. People don't have time or means to improve themselves, and so that's a problem. Uh, here's a quote. Whosoever is willing to give for the benefit of the whole, that amount of labor of which he is capable ought to receive such amount of recompense for that labor as will enable him more or less to develop his individual life in each of the essential characteristics by which individual life is defined. Okay, this reminds me a little bit about uh, the quote by Marx that he, uh, it's from famous in the, um, in the Critique of the Gotha Program. Um, where he says, from each according to his uh, ability to each according to his need. I wonder, uh, there was kind of an evolution uh, with Marx um, on that phrase. Uh, so I wonder if, if Mazzini had any uh, influence there. Uh, goes on to talk about um, how this is the ideal and anything else is just a war of factions. So he's talking about unity here, uh, very Republican. Um, and I, I'm wondering if if he's arguing that there should be no factions or just denying factional conflict. It's a little unclear. I, I, I would really like to, uh, to know more about that. Um, if you have any understanding, please uh, leave your remarks in the comments section. Uh, so he goes on to uh, denounce liberal economics. Uh, and he, he uh, leave, um, has, I have a quote here. Uh, Each for himself and liberty for us all. Um, and also today, capital is the tyrant of labor. Uh, but he also talks about how socialism is impossible. Um, and he, po he opposes all types of uh, socialism, uh, Simonianism, Feuerism, and Communism. Uh, they violate the law of progress. Prosperity must be protected, but the modes by which it is governed can change. So that's interesting. You know, um, uh, you know capitalism is kind of the predominant. Uh, economic model, uh, but you know, it can change. Uh, and even the very definition of property. So property must be protected, but the modes of which it is governed can change. Property is ill-constituted at present because of conquest. Base partition is not laid down in a just and equal uh, proportion to labor done. It tends to become the monopoly of the few. Taxes benefit the rich. Abolishing property is like cutting down the tree to gather its fruit. So you see it's not um, abolishing. So he's speaking out against his, his uh, anarchist friends um, who want to abolish property. Uh, you suppress the source of wealth. You must open a path for the many to acquire property. Change taxes to exempt the necessities of life. It's good platform stuff. Um, let's see. Render the economy which gradually produces property possible to working men. And quote, we must suppress the political privilege now conceded to property and allow to all a share in the work of legislation. End quote. 
So, is, is he talking about the uh, the mixed regime here, or simply um, a, abolishing property requirements to vote? It's a little, I don't know. It's a little vague. I don't know what he's if he's uh, pushing one way or the other. Um, I think out of uh, although for modern Republicans, he's uh, you know it's it's not a big deal that he's uh not really arguing for the mixed regime i think that's kind of a rousseauian attitude um yeah uh he argues against communism uh for quite a bit here uh he also says that minimum wages don't work because it increases the price of products you know so the, that argument goes back a uh, you know a uh, hundred over 150 years. So he says the remedy is, quote, the union of labor and capital in the same hands. Uh, goes on to say, quote, whenever you find capital and labor in the same hands, wherever the profits of labor are divided among the workmen in proportion to the increase of those profits and to the amount of aid by the workmen to the collective work, you will find that the de you will find both the decrease of poverty and the increase of morality. So that's that's really interesting. Uh, as opposed to wages, um, let's see. It also says free unions, uh, not government impositions. Um, and this goes against uh, communism and fascism. Um, fascism had unions, but they were like state unions. So it's not, um, you know, he's not, he's not proposing, uh, what the fascists would, would want and, and not what the communists would want either. So, um, yeah, so this is really interesting what he's talking about with, uh, with, uh, minimum wage. Uh, I believe it's Sweden that has a uh, very, very low minimum wage. But most of their workers are in unions and make a lot more money than the, the minimum wage. So there's, um, yeah, a lot of arguments against uh, minimum wage. Um, let's see. He talks about associations again. Uh, says that they have to have equality of members to choose their leaders, power to recall their leaders, and uh, they, their members need to f be free to join after the founding without introducing new capital. Uh, but they can make annual contributions or pay dues. And that's the, and they have access to the collective capital. Uh, and also, they need to have free distribution of tools. Uh, where do you get capital to begin? Well, he talks about uh, self-donations. Um, talks about um, uh, getting uh, the shareholders and also loans from the government. But he says it's better to stay out of the debt of others. And so the, the self donations are, uh, are, are primary. Um, I also uh, shared another video uh, where he shares a, um, an example. This is just in a footnote of the book, uh, and, but I read it in its entirety. It's like three pages, so uh, I left it out of here. Um, and then chapter 12 is the conclusion, and that's just really a lot of uh, warning that there are wolves in sheep clothing and immoral men who will cheat you. So, yeah, that's all I got out of the conclusion, but... Anyway, that, this, is, this was a really a great read. Um, I think I read it twice. I think I read it like last year and then um, I read it again and I just got more out of it the second time. Um, maybe because I had read some other uh, bits of uh, Mazzini and un understood him better the, going into it the second time. Um, so I hope these notes provide you with, you, you with some guidance so you don't have to read it twice like I did. Until next time, long live the Republic.